previously on Raw Danger. He's bound to die, loaded up and trucking. Are we gonna do what they say can't be done? Oh, we've got a long way to go and a short time to get there. I'm eastbound, just watch your bandit run. Well, good evening and welcome back to Nathan Plays Raw Danger. My name is Nathan and this is Raw Danger for the PlayStation 2. In the previous episode, we finished off Isaac Schiller's chapter, The Taxi Driver, discovered a little bit more about the mayor being in cahoots with NorCal Pharmaceutical, though we don't at this point know the depths to which this conspiracy truly goes. We do have some more clues to help us along our way. So in this chapter, we're going to be uh, starting with another character teased at in the last episode. Let's load the game up and see who it's going to be. Her name is Paige Meyer. This, of course, is something that I can change. Because as you know, in all the dialogue, people will just skip over it and not mention any names ever. Leaving a conspicuous sort of blank in the recordings. But so I usually leave it with the default. Why not? Paige Meyer it is. She's a student. She's a female, 16 years old, according to the game. And we begin on Delray High School, curiously on day number two already, where the other chapters have typically started around the beginning of this whole disaster. In this chapter, it's well underway. So I come to my first decision as Paige, my reaction to this whole thing. I can wonder if Emily evacuated safely, as if I care. Why did she do this to me? Not really the time for that. I think really my priority here should be to get to safety. So with that, I can now begin exploring the classroom. It's kind of creepy. The crooked angle of the obviously damaged building and the sort of ruined nature of things make me think a little bit on a, um, on a silent hill kind of kick hopefully nothing too terrible happens there's a note evacuate to the gym all right well just in case i was unclear from the cutscenes, i guess i'll get on that not really a lot of things to pick up and in any case i don't have a lot of inventory space my talent is memories this time around so i have a talent for remembering awful things that have happened to me. So far I can watch the one cutscene that I've seen already with the photos. And I suppose that as we go along we'll be picking up more of those and we can review them at our leisure. Really just wallow in those bad memories of bullying and things if we want to. Get into the hallway here. As you can see things are a little bit crooked still. Some water pooling in the middle. See if we can get around that. Oh there's a door. Very convenient. Still has the uh, ski compass from the last chapter, and occasionally some rumble shape the, shake the building. I tried to be on the ball with the crouch button so I don't get knocked over, but I, I don't think I'm the ones that are actually going to knock me over. I think I'm never on. I'm never ready for those. I did try to check out some of the lockers and see if they could be opened, which they could not. Very sad. And eventually made my way around to this corner of the room, which has been broken open. There's a lot of wind coming in. And then I nearly fell to my death. The item on the ledge is sort of a clue that I need to get down there. 
which is going to be tricky given the wind. And so I did slip off numerous times, or nearly do so. I forgot that I have that button for, uh, I think it's R1, for kind of holding on to railings and things like that from the previous chapters. It just completely slipped my mind, and so I just kind of awkwardly made my way down here and nearly fell off a number of times. I'm sure that button would have worked in this circumstance. It looks like there's a kind of an, a ridge right there that I could have held on to. We made it work, you know? Whatever. No disaster survivor at 16 is going to do every little thing perfectly, you know, so don't judge. Don't judge me in page. At the end of the ledge here, the item happens to be a brand new compass. It's the triangle compass. Very nice. School appropriate. So let's equip that immediately, of course. Hello? Is anyone there? choose how to respond to this. Uh, I can try and shout okay, but it is quite noisy. So I decided to make an okay gesture. O and K. Isn't that adorable? Look at that. She considers for a moment and then does the same thing. I suppose there's nothing for it but to press on. I just want to go back and comment on the fact that when I picked OK Gesture, I really didn't know how that was going to look. But then when she did it, that was the only thing that made sense, I guess. Well, it looks as though the game is sort of ushering us in one direction, but of course we have to go the other way just to see if there are any cool things to pick up. And I got a class journal. Curious. Let's take a look. Head over to the read area where our documents are stored. Class journal here. And uh, it is actually... It's someone talking about being able to share their true feelings with their parents. A little bit cryptic. Maybe that'll pay off later on. Maybe not. I guess I sort of assumed it would be like a journal of the entire class, but it's, it's just somebody's personal journal. I don't know how the school system works in America. This does look like a pretty typical American high school, though, what with the sliding doors and all. Oh, a campus newspaper. We'll save that one for later, perhaps. Some more ominous rumbles and some more things falling down. We do find our first survival point in this classroom. Seems a little bit uh, unwise to leave what appears to be an open flame on a tilted floor. I'll be surprised if this building isn't ruined by fire later on. So I took a moment to warm up and carry on. Find this ledge here. It's sort of a larger area where the men's and women's washrooms are. Or bathrooms, I guess, for our non-Canadian friends. Hey, 
guys. There's an ugly bitch going to our school. Really? How disgraceful. We need to do something so she won't come to school anymore. Haha! <laughs> How about this? You like that? Don't come to our school anymore. So after hearing a door squeak, I have the option to check out the restroom. Well, it could be another survivor in need of help, and so I thought I would go in for sure. As you've noticed, the bullying is really ramping up in intensity in those flashbacks, by the way. I, 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 do people deal with that? I don't know. I mean, I was just a shy computer geek when I was in high school, and people weren't always very nice, but not to that degree. I mean, this is, like, systematic. It's crazy. Anyway, it uh, doesn't appear as though there's anyone in the restroom that I heard the sound come from, which is a little bit curious, a little, uh, a little frightening. Once again, the Silent Hill kind of vibes coming through loud and clear for me, at least, having never actually played through the entire first game, or any of them, for that matter. But I did watch a really good Let's Play of Silent Hill 2 one time. Checking out the other bathroom. Doesn't seem to be anybody around. Well, maybe it was just the earthquake, the, the building shifting and one of the doors swinging open. When suddenly, from the direction of the women's bathrooms, comes a uh, fairly alarming new development. Uh, hello. There's not a problem with your computer. There is actually nothing playing when he talks. I assume he's telepathic. Sir? Uh, so my options are uh, to scream for help, say no and run away, or use an no, item. No, While well, lacking don't. really any good items at this point, I decided to yell no and run for it. As uh, Mr. Creeperson gives me chase here. Not really down for this development, so I ran. I ran like crazy. And he's keeping up pretty good. When I was actually playing this, I was going, no, 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 the whole time. But I made a bit of a discovery here, which is that um, he's actually not going to do anything. He just sort of stands there and mirrors your movements, but apparently poses no real immediate threat other than just being really, really creepy, which is threatening in its own way. And then he's going to wander off? I'm not really sure. So the chase scene kind of turned out to be nothing. But here, oh. Well, doesn't that just look familiar? Fortunately, we made it into the next building just as the water hits and Professor Creeperson was apparently washed away by the floods. Yes, a little crossover there with Isaac's chapter from the previous episode, and inside of this next building we found a sports bag, a Tomasho brand, which when equipped, kind of awkwardly worn on the back, extends our uh, inventory space considerably, even though so far we've had actually nothing to put in there. I spotted that blue arrow and uh, found my way into this little side room here. Get our very first heating pad of the chapter. Always good to have a couple of those on hand. And those cute mittens we keep finding. As well as on the other side of the room, a hot dog compass. Yeah, with some lettuce in there, I guess. Typical American hot dog. After that little recollection, I have another choice to make. I can choose not to focus on bad memories. I can upbraid myself for the way I acted. But I think it's in the best interest of my player character here that I, I try and encourage 
uh, you know, moving on and, and really um, sort of getting past it, I hope. Dealing with it as much as possible. So we move on to the uh, second floor of the other building here. A bit of a troubled looking hallway, some cracks in the floor, but there are some things to pick up and a sign here. In case it's unclear, it says doors are locked. You'd better hurry or won't make it. Emily Rose. P.S. Key to this door is in staff room. Well, that was nice of her. She didn't have to give me any clues, and she did. I'll lock up the place for security. You have to hurry, otherwise you may be left behind. Emily. P.S. If you need the key to this door, look inside the staff room. It's sort of the expanded version of the note that I just read. It doesn't open. Ugh, the keys in the staff room. Not sure where she got those uh, extra lines of dialogue from. Maybe it was some sort of a, a psychic memory left on that spot. However, I found this fire hose. Well, I got tons of inventory space. Let's throw that in there. Who knows when you're going to need a good fire hose on hand in a disaster scenario. As well as this mop. Well, there is a lot of water about. Maybe... It'll be on me to help clean up a little bit in the aftermath. You know, always be prepared. How we fit the mop in the bag is anyone's guess. It's time to head down the other hallway here. Which isn't looking so great. There's a piano sort of stuck in the middle of the room there. Or in the hallway, rather. Looks like it might have come on out of what appears to be a music room. Some instruments, some uh, lines for musical notation on the board there. A rather large xylophone. I'd like to get my hands on that, if you know what I mean. And uh, although I couldn't uh, see it right away, there is somebody calling for help. Hey. Oh, it's our teacher friend from earlier. I need some help. My legs are stuck. I need you to move the piano so I can get my legs out. So I can choose to go and find help. I can look for something to move it. I can just laugh and call her names. Not super appropriate. It. Let's look for something to move it. Perhaps some of those items that I just picked up will be uh, useful in this situation. Let's see what we have. First of all, I attempted to use the mop. I thought perhaps as a lever. I know it's kind of flimsy, but maybe just maybe I could get enough leverage to be able to pry it up. Unfortunately, that's no good. And the mop is summarily discarded. Next item on, uh, on option here is the fire hose. Which somehow makes more sense. And as you can see, I've constructed an elaborate sort of a winch and pulley system through the classroom window there. Pretty impressive. Next, I'll have to make some sort of rudimentary lathe. Anyway. Quick yank on the fire hose. And Mrs. Uh, lady is able to get free. Miss Lady? I guess I don't really know. Thank you for your help. I can't believe this. I can't believe this is happening again. Again? Curious. Ah, staff room. There was something about the staff room. I can just cut to the chase and ask her to open the door in the hallway, but I thought, uh... Let's take a moment to, you know, recuperate. No, no need to rush out of this flooded, collapsing building. So off to the staff room we go. And we take a moment to collect ourselves around a survival point. I was checking to make sure everyone had evacuated. And I looked up and saw you. What were you doing there? Don't worry. 
I'll make sure to discuss this with my parents. Do you enjoy being a student teacher? Well, yes. I enjoy it very much. Is it hard work? It's really hard. I was about ready to quit and then this blood happened. But this is what I chose. I can't give up now. My school was located on Capitol Island. Do you know what happened there? Mm, no, I don't know. Well, I figured you didn't. It was almost five years ago. The island sank in front of me. The entire city was submerged underwater. Everything, from my home, park I used to play in, all gone. That whole ordeal made me a stronger person. I can't believe that I'm in the middle of another disaster. What a bad luck. <laughs> Perhaps our luck has changed. Maybe you're right. What are the chances of the two of us working together? Yeah, I'm feeling much better now. Let's get going. So as you saw, I was mostly nice for that conversation, and uh, in the end did get the hallway key. Kelly says it's time to evacuate to the gym, but I stuck around for a little bit to warm up. The events that she's referring to on Capitol Island are actually a reference to the previous game in this series, uh, released in the States as Disaster Report, and Canada, I guess. And uh, one that I rented, completed in a weekend, and is actually what turned me on to this series kind of generally. I had no idea that another sequel had ever been released until last year when I discovered completely at random that our local used game store had a copy. And here we are. Here we are now. So I thought that was kind of neat. little crossover. She went on to be a student teacher and... Another terrifying disaster is happening all over again. I checked out the report card that I found on the desk, by the way, and it happens to be mine. Pretty good across the board, all things considered. And actually recommends me for a student, uh, the student government. Which is, that's nice, they didn't have to do that. The rest of the staff room was not particularly exciting, so it was time to uh, take a quick glance down the hallway, see if there's anything good down there. I actually didn't uh, go to the all the way to the end of the hallway earlier, so I decided to do that. Just to see if there was anything else else worth salvaging. The doors have been knocked off what appears to be a uh, science room here. Something by the door that I wasn't seeming to be able to grab. So I went around the room first to see what else there was. First of all, there's this tweezers compass. Well, I did like the hot dog better, but I do have a habit of equipping every new compass I find, so Tweezer's compass goes on. Over by the blackboard, we have some vegetable oil. Who knows when that will be useful, but again, lots of inventory space. And a propane tank. Propane tank, I think, goes hand in hand with another item that we've seen earlier on, and that I was able to grab this time now that I came back to the doorway. First, whoops, head outside there. And there's a portable stove. Now, normally I wouldn't be bothered uh, carrying around cookware or cooking things like this. We have found things like this in past chapters. But again, lots of inventory. Why not? In heading back to Kelly, the floor collapses and who shows up? But, uh, oh, Mr. Savage is his name. Creepy teacher. He's going to rescue me and then make me study. Whatever that means in his mind, I don't believe I wish to know. It's time for me to make my way hastily across this uh, beam here. And Mr. Savage is thrown off yet again. Nobody remarks upon this and we simply go on with our adventure. We 
share a quiet moment together. I imagine somebody like Kelly had her own problems with Mr. Savage. Now, it remains to be seen at this point. I don't actually know if something about this disaster has triggered uh, this sort of suspicious and uh, creepy behavior in him, or if he was always that way. In in which case, the school division of Geo City really needs to take a hard look at its hiring practices. Or is it Del Rey? I mean, Geo City's the underground place. Del Rey is the rest of the... Anyway, we're in a new area now, the gymnasium. We actually made it. Kelly heads downstairs, but I went up to the uh, sort of a... I don't know, is this like a terrace that kind of goes around the edge of the gym? Sort of observation deck there. There's a couple of people on the stage and what looks to be a survival point. But before we head over there, we have to check out the rest of this. Just, just to see if there's anything good. What if there's a good pair of boots down here? We don't know. There is something. And it's a rubber compass. Now, this doesn't look very interesting from that angle, but when you equip it, it actually appears to be a dolly-esque sort of melting compass, which might be my favorite one that I've found so far. Unironically favorite. Jet ski, of course, being favorite all time, you know, for any category. We can also pop into the supply room back here. I'm walking right past that one. Let's check out the gymnasium proper. Kelly! I'm sorry that I'm late. I'll never get over the way people just rotate on the spot. <coughs> I don't know, I, I suddenly feel very sick. Oh, the rest of them have been rescued. The next helicopter should be here soon. Then we'll wait. <coughs> Could you please go outside and check? This is the key to the gym. Okay, not sure what I'm checking exactly. Maybe I'm looking for the next approaching helicopter, but I do get a gymnasium key. I guess I could have a seat and play some piano for a bit. There are some of my fellow classmates sprawled out on mats. Not looking so good. And in this box of supplies near the back, I find a heating pad. As well as a first aid kit. Again, very handy things to have around. But seeing as how I'd hit a fairly appropriate video length, I decided that this uh, survival point was a good spot to warm up and take a little bit of a breather. Next time on Raw Danger, we're going to head outside of the gym and see what we can find out there. Hopefully Mr. Savage is done with, but I strongly doubt it. We'll see if we can find rescue for our friends and school chums and hopefully uh, get a deeper understanding of the mystery behind this entire disaster. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next mission.